The, the goal is really to focus on a community space where people who have innovative ideas can come and help get help working on projects or to find other people working on similar projects. Uh, so that is what our research found is that communities that really do a good job of supporting creativity and entrepreneurship uh, create an ecosystem, they call it, uh, that helps people get their projects off the ground. So the Idea Center is really supposed to be that ground zero of, of those projects where people can come when they want to get started. The biggest thing for us is that Stevens Point is trying to brand itself as a really innovative, forward-thinking small city, as opposed to a lot of the reputations a lot of the other small towns in Wisconsin have. And uh, you hear some of the people like the, the CEO of Skyward will call it the Silicon Valley of the Midwest, right? So trying to get into that reputation. And so a lot of what we're trying to do is foster support for those creative projects so we have more projects to talk about, but also in the process uh, grow that identity piece of, of our community so that people think of Stevens Point as a really forward thinking and innovative place. I think the biggest thing for us is that we're already outgrowing this space. We already have events that happen here that attract more people than we can we can fit in the space. Uh, we had 55 arts leaders from across the state come in here and fit into the space and it was really tight. Uh, and so I think that's part of the reason we're looking at the Fox as a location is recognizing that the resources we have are already having an impact, but we're going to grow, outgrow this space pretty quickly. And so having the additional resources of, of more space, of a performance venue, of a gathering space, an auditorium type venue, mm -hmm. uh, and being able to make more technological adv advancements as well. Uh, you know, we're really limited in what equipment we can fit into this space right now and how that can, how that use will interact with other spaces. So just trying to think about a long-term vision that will really support and brand creativity. I think there's one other piece to it too, which is just the downtown location. Um, we're sort of downtown here, but we're a little bit removed. And so uh, it's hard for people to find us and it's hard for people who don't know what's going on here to like stumble into the space. And so being really downtown located would really help that promotion piece of what we're trying to do. So that's a big part of the Fox's history is that it's always been open and renovated uh, to fit the needs of the community in the future. So when it was built in 1894, it was actually built as a combination of an arts and entrepreneurship space because it actually had two storefronts built into the, the footprint itself. Uh, it was open for about 30 years and then it closed down in the 20s and they reopened it as a, a, a a silent movie theater uh, at first and then reopened it again as a, a regular movie theater. Uh, it was closed again in the 30s and 40s and they renovated it into an Art Deco bigger movie theater. But uh, what's interesting about the history of the Fox is they've always uh, you know, had it for a while, closed it down, like thought about what its best future use was and then reopened it. And so we're trying to do the same thing. Really think about again what uh, the future of spaces like the Fox could look like for a community and design something that we think fits into that 21st century use. I think I would say that if you look at the history of the Fox, you'll find that it closed for a reason. Uh, and it closed in large part because that use wasn't popular in the economy anymore. Uh, and it, if you look even at the spaces around the state that have been reopened, a lot of them are struggling and they're struggling because people returned them to a historic use instead of thinking about how they could be used better in the future. And so we still want to honor the history of the Fox. Uh, we still want to do a lot of the same things that the Fox historically has done. Uh, but we want to make sure that in moving forward, we're thinking about really what its 21st century use will be uh, and, and how to have the most impact in the community in that way. financial hurdles, there are business planning hurdles that we're still looking at. Uh, the, the biggest thing is that we want to make sure that we create a project that is useful for the community, that gives back to the community, that whatever investment we make in the project is, is in the best interest of the community long term. That's part of where we get interested in these innovation spaces. If you think about the value of growing a new company in town or growing a new artist in our community, uh, you know, you look at what Justin Vernon has done to the city of Eau Claire as an example. Uh, having a space that is intentionally designed to grow uh, those creative ventures, we think is the best opportunity for return on our impact. And actually one of the exciting things, things for us, we just talked to the Kaufman Foundation out of Kansas City, uh, their leading foundation in the U.S. for entrepreneurship, and their new playbook for how communities grow uh, successful economic development is really in focusing on the things we're focusing on, uh, creating a community that feels creative, and then building networking and supports for creative people to help their projects get off the ground. Because again, you get one project that comes out of a space like that, uh, it returns your investment almost immediately.